Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Jay from Coding with Jaybird, where I upload weekly tutorials to help build your confidence in coding. Today we're going to talk about div and span tags. Let's get started, shall we? Let's take a peek inside the div and span tags project that I've created. Now, I have an IMG folder which has a few images within it and an index.html file. Now, this file is referencing these four images as you can see here. And the images are shown here in the browser on the right hand side, each one having a width of 100 pixels. Now, just after that, I have an H2 and some content that I got from Wikipedia, just talking a little bit about seasons. All right, so today, since we're talking about divs and span tags, let's start with divs first. Divs are used to create a block of code that is a block level element, meaning that the code enclosed in the opening and closing div tags will take up the entire horizontal space of its parent container. Because I have these four images nested directly inside the body tag, it'll take up the entire width of the page if I have my div sitting in this body tag. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's place a div element. Now a div is simply written like this. You have an opening tag with the word div inside of it and a closing tag with div inside of it. Now I can put some content inside this div. So in this case, let's put these two images. I'm gonna cut them out of here and place them inside this div. Now the vertical space is going to be determined by the content of the div tag. So in this case, it's just gonna be the height of these two images and that's basically it. So when I save it, let's have a look in the browser to see what happens. You can see that the second two images have dropped down to the line below. And that's because the div is this imaginary container. You can't really see it, but it's a container that wraps around these first two images and it spans the entire width of this page. So it takes up the entire horizontal block of space because it's a block level element. Now we can actually have a look at this in Chrome's developer tools. On a Mac, you would use Option Command J to open those dev tools, and on a Windows, you'd use Control Shift J. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's dive into the developer tools. We can see our body tag is there, our H1, and then here's this div. And if I select div by clicking on it, you can see this entire blue highlighted space has come up, and it says it's 713 pixels wide by 70.64 high. And if I stretch this a bit, you can see now the width has changed to 976 and it's still 70.64 high. So that tells you that the width of the window determines the width of this div because the div is going to take up the entire width of that body tag. All right, so let's talk about span tags next. A span tag simply wraps around an inline element. Essentially, it squeezes in between other elements and makes just enough room for the content that is within it. So let's go ahead and put a span tag between our last two images. So we're gonna write the word span inside our opening tag and we have a closing span tag that follows. Now inside the span tag, I'm gonna put the text my span tag. And when I save it, you can see what happens on the right here. The browser shows us that it's created just enough space for the words my span tag between the third and fourth image. Now this my span tag text did not take up the entire horizontal width of the page. It just created enough for those words and that's it. All right, so let's demonstrate this further down in our paragraph for seasons. A season is a division of the year based on changes in weather. So now let's say after this word year, I wanna squeeze in the words spring, summer, fall, and winter. So I can simply put a span tag inside this text. Now that looks a little odd. You're wondering, how do you put a span tag in there? But you're basically adding another element anywhere else in the page between other elements. Okay, so we can put them loosely in the body tag like we've done here, or we can put them within our paragraph element as well, which is our P tag. So here I can say spring, summer, fall, and winter. And upon saving it, you can see we've added the word spring, summer, fall, and winter within our paragraph tag. Now, this is really useful for when you want to style a certain portion of your page to look a little different. And we're going to get into styling in the next few videos where we start learning a little bit about CSS. And that sums up my video for div and span tags. I hope you've been enjoying this series so far. I've been having a great time making these series. 
After my JavaScript tutorial for beginner, I thought, why not make an HTML and CSS series as well? And so far it's been going really well. So if you want to keep watching more videos, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more videos as I release them every week. Until next week, keep on coding.